2017, as the first message that I preached here as the official pastor of Clarksburg Baptist Church, it was titled, The Mission. And we desire to be a mission-driven church here at Clarksburg Baptist Church. Matthew 28, 18 spells that out for us. It says, go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And behold, he says, we don't have to do it alone. I am with you always to the end of the age. This verse as Jesus is uh, about to ascend to heaven. He uh, tells us to go and to make disciples and to teach them. And back then, we boiled the mission down to one phrase, make disciples that make disciples. And since then, we fleshed out what that means with some other phrases like worship, community, and mission, love God, love people, and go, the great commandment and the great commission. And then in 2018, we introduced three words that we hoped would describe our purpose and our process. And if your eyes are open, you've seen these three words around here. In fact, Boston just threw them up behind me. Big surprise. Give it up for Boston. Uh, yeah, up there, Boston Bowers. How old are you, Boston? 15 years old back there helping us with the, the pro presenter. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. But we have a tons of faces around here, and these words behind me might not be uh, familiar to you. God's working here at CBC. We've got tons of kids that are coming, and we truly believe that God is going to do something unbelievable here in 2023. But in order to do that, we believe that we have to be laser-focused on the mission that we have been given because it's so easy to be busy about the wrong things and to have our minds be occupied about all the wrong things. But we only have one life. We only have one chance to laser focus on the main thing. We all know what DNA is, right? It's the building blocks of life. It's this spiral-looking ladder thing. Uh, it looks kind of like this. I think we got it up there. Yeah, there's a picture of it. So what is our DNA as a church? What makes us tick? We know that we want to accomplish the mission that God has given us to make disciples. But what does that process look like? I believe that we have the people and the structure in place here to be the church that God has made us to be. But today we're going to shine a little bit of light, a little bit of clarity on our process. So you guys got a hint up there. What are our three G's? Say them out. That's right. So are we doing these things in our Christian walk? They're not just words to hang on a wall somewhere. This is a challenge to you. Whether you've been here for, you know, this is your first Sunday, you've been here for 40 years. These things should be so ingrained in us that they aren't just what we do, but it's who we are. As we explain these steps, you can probably pretty quickly determine where you are in this process of discipleship. And that's that first one is this, is to gather. For many people, this is the natural first step in their discipleship process, to gather with people. Gather is what we're doing right now, this Sunday at 10 a.m. to 11.15-ish, depending on how long my voice holds up. We'll see how long we go. If I tag in Scott, you'll know what's up. Well, whether it's in person or online, we gather together. And for thousands of years, the church has gathered together to celebrate, to lift up, and to praise the name of Jesus. And when we step into this room and gather together as a church, we join those millions that have come before us and those that will come after in proclaiming, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and who is to come. We gather together as the church to proclaim these things. And gathering is a vital part of discipleship. We gather together to refresh and to refocus and to remotivate ourselves. It's impossible to live a vibrant Christian walk alone. So we gather 
Sometimes we gather in this room. Sometimes it's around picnic tables. Other times it's in uh, our homes. But the church is a group of people that gathers. And they gather often and invite others to gather with us. Why? Because we are in a spiritual battle and life is hard. And this Sunday morning time when we get to sing together and to pray together, this is our rallying time, our celebration time for victories, a time for recruiting and inspiring new followers of Christ and, and opening our Bibles and taking communion together like we will in just a little while. We celebrate. And we're an outward-facing church, and that's important, but we cannot forget about this time of gathering as a family to be encouraged before we are launched out into this mission field called Harrison County. We need each other, and we need you. And it makes a difference when you're not here, because you are a part of the body. And look, you might not always get thanked for everything that you do, although I hope you do. It might not always be noticed like you should, but don't ever believe that you are not vitally important to this church. We gather and we grow. That's our goal is to grow. And we believe that at CBC, the real lasting spiritual growth starts in the community care and accountability of life groups. Pastor Scott, your point man uh, to connect one of those groups. They're always starting and ending and changing and morphing, and he keeps up to date with all that uh, information, and he's in the next steps area back here after the service to help you connect to this gather, grow, and give. Children, teens, all the way up to senior adults, we have a group for you. And a life group is a place to ask questions and to pray together and to make friends and to study the Bible together. And if you don't feel like you yet have a place here at Clarksburg Baptist Church and you don't have a life group, then you're missing out. And don't give up after the first one or two. Sometimes, you know, the, the theme doesn't fit or maybe, uh, you know, just doesn't feel right at first, but don't give up. Keep pushing towards people and community. If you come and ask the, one of the pastors about how you can better connect at Clarksburg Baptist Church, their first response is going to be, have you joined a life group yet? It's important. You have to make time for it. In the early church, they met in houses, and our life groups are the closest thing that we have to a first century church experience. We love our life groups, and we believe it's the next step in your discipleship. That's where you're going to find prayer partners and talk about your struggles and victories and where we can serve the community together. On Christmas Eve, uh, we had a group up here cooking uh, cookies for the warming shelter. And over the next couple months, we've got six different times that our life groups are going to feed the warming shelter. This is going to be a place where you can serve and our life groups gather, grow, and give together as well. And that means we must meet often. We have to commit and make time for each other and be dedicate, uh, dedicated to each other. And that also means that those of us that are in established life, life groups are actively seeking out people that we don't know and asking them to join us and to grow with us. Maybe asking them out to eat. Eating together is a vital part of the Christian life walk. People make jokes about it all the time, right? Baptists know how to eat. It started all the way back at the beginning. They broke bread together. They ate together. They sat around tables together. Jesus modeled this for us. We ought to be asking people out to eat, inviting people into our homes, sitting together, because this isn't enough. This 10 o'clock service is a time for us to, to, to get excited and to celebrate but it's not where it ends. We've got to grow deeper. We've got to do more than just a handshake on Sunday mornings. So how are you actively showing that you love your church family? Now, also part of how life groups work is through multiplication. I did not say that right. <laughs> I'm not even going to go back and try it, though. But people are trained in a life group to start life groups themselves. If you're not part of a life group, don't come and say, hey, I want to start a life group. Go join a life group, 
figure out how it works, be discipled yourself, and then you say, hey, I think God's calling me to step out into this new thing. It's, it's a beautiful thing, and that's one of Pastor Scott's roles. We're going to talk about him a lot today. That's one of his roles is to help train leaders to start more life groups, to help everyone get involved. Why? So that we can gather and grow and give together. And that's that last one is to give. And this is the next step in discipleship is giving back out of those three T's that we talk about often, our time, our talent, and our treasures. At Clarksburg Baptist Church, we believe and practice whole life stewardship, that everything is God's, and that we are used uh, to manage that, but God has given it to us in order to give it back, in order to be a blessing to others. And first, we believe that God expects every member of Clarksburg Baptist Church to serve God and others by investing their time. And that's a hard thing in the society that we have right now because we have decided to pack our lives so full of junk that we don't have time for the important things. Everything is competing for our time. But God expects us to use our time, our God-given gifts and passions and abilities, our talents, to serve him. Now, our talents can be used here at Clarksburg Baptist Church, but even better if they're used out there in the community. And you might say, hey, I've been here a while. I don't see a place that I super fit in. Hey, it doesn't have to be here where you use your time and talents. Why not us take the light out into the dark places and spread it, not just here in this room? And we're working on creating more partnerships with trusted organizations in the community so that we can connect you to them. Just like we will do with the mission, with Ferns Feeding Friends, with the warming shelters, our hope is that you can come to us and say, hey, I want to do something. And we can say, here's a place that you can serve. Here's another place. Here's another place. Here's another place. And we're going to organize places that we can go and be the light out in the community. So that we can volunteer and do good and show the love of Christ. We believe in servant leadership and our model for leadership is Jesus Christ. And those of us that want to be leaders are servants first. We also ask those who call CBC their church home to habitually invest a portion of their income, tithe, into God's work here at Clarksburg Baptist Church. The word tithe literally means 10%, and that's a great place to start. All throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New, God set up the standard that you give your tithe where you worship as an act of worship to God, investing where you're being ministered to. And then you give offerings like world missions and above and beyond uh, things to needy people uh, out of uh, the abundance of that, after. See, God set up the standard for giving because God is a cheerful giver. For God so loved the world that he gave. For the wages of the sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. God is a cheerful giver. Show me your bank statement and calendar and I will show you what you love. I love coffee and eating out. <laughs> Tori loves buying things for the kids. I, she constantly is calling me and saying, hey, should I get this? I'm like, no, buy something for yourself. You can see it all over our bank statement, what we love. Luke 12, 34 says it this way. It says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So giving is the next step of discipleship. Giving of our most prized possession, our time. By serving people in need. People that are broken and hurting. And giving of our talents and gifts that God has given us. And then giving of our treasures, our finances. Even non-Christians understand the joy of giving back. In 2015, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates started the Giving Pledge, in which they pledged to give away almost all of their fortune by the time that they died. Mark Zuckerberg, Richard Branson, and over 150 other multimillionaires and billionaires have joined together in emphatically backing the Bible principle without even knowing it that it's better to give 
than to receive. And the older we get, we kind of feel this at Christmas, right? It's much more about the giving side of it, and we get way more excited about that than what we actually gift, uh, get. That's because we're made in the image of God, and God is a cheerful giver. All the world is God's, and it's our honor to follow his example, to give to others and back to him. Some of us have been taking part of these three G's for years. Well, it doesn't end when you have made it through these steps of discipleships. Uh, the next part is inviting people into this process and, and walking with them. So who are you discipling? You may say, I got those three things down, Pastor Phil. What's next? The next is you leading someone else through that process. Gather points our focus upward. Grow points our focus inward and give points our focus outward. We see these three steps spelled out in 1 Peter 2, 5. Peter here is talking to the church, and he says, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. That's a gather, right? Us as living stones are coming together and being built up into who God made us to be. To be what? A holy priesthood. We're growing into who God made us to be. And then to offer spiritual sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ. We're giving. Someone explained 1 Peter 2, 5 this way. Peter calls us a spiritual house. And in the previous verse, Peter identified Jesus, the Lord, as the living stone. He is living because he, is, uh, he was dead and now is alive. And then in the next few verses, he's called a stone because he's the chief cornerstone of the house of God, the foundation. And now Peter includes believers in this metaphor. Just like Jesus, Christians are living stones. We once were dead as a rock spiritually, but we've been made alive by God's grace through our faith in Christ. Christians are stones that are set aside for a specific project. God is currently building us into a spiritual house, a dwelling place for himself in this new temple made out of the people of God. We gather together as pieces of a spiritual house. And God's people are, uh, in Christ, are the temple. Our body is the house of the Holy Spirit. So we gather. We're also called holy priests. Why? Because all the barriers between God and us have been removed. We come to our loving Father boldly, needing no mediator but Jesus himself. We grow deep in our relationship with God, and we can go right to him. It doesn't matter who you are in this room. You can talk to God and listen to him, endeavoring to follow him and to grow into holiness with no barriers between us and God. We don't have to go through a priest we don't have to go through a pastor. You don't have to come and say, Pastor Phil, can you tell God? No, that's not how it works. We have direct access to God. And you can even study your Bible yourself and compare it with other scriptures and learn and grow deeper. And next it says we offer ourselves as spiritual sacrifices, holding nothing back, just like Jesus held nothing back from us. All to Jesus we surrender. All to him we freely give. So we offer our time and our talents and our treasures as spiritual sacrifices of our heart to our loving God. Trusting that through our obedience that God will take care of us and bless us just like he promises. So we want to make sure that every person that comes into this room knows this next step for them in their Christian walk. Gather, grow, give. And then walk through those things with someone else. And that means we've got to pray about it. We've got to ask God who we are supposed to disciple. Why? Because our flesh pulls at us to make church about ourselves. We begin to fall in love with our opinion, and we feel like it should really matter about whether or not the church feels good to us us or whether or not we're happy or whether or not we fit in and everybody else agrees with us. But our hope is that we instead gathering around our opinion that we gather around 
and unify under this banner of our mission, which is gather, grow, and give together. And our hope is that we begin to measure success as to whether we are participating in these three steps, not whether the songs would be the songs that we would pick or the style is what we feel comfortable in. Instead, us gauging our satisfaction with our church as to whether we're accomplishing the mission and purpose that God has left us with. Worship, community, mission, love God, love people, and go. Our definition of discipleship, our DNA. Are we gathering, growing, and giving together as a church? If not, we're not a church. If we just gather, then we're just a people in a room. If we're just growing and building more intellectual knowledge about the scripture, but never living it out, then we're dead. We've got to have these three things in order to be a church. And you have to have these three things in order to be a member of a church. It's not enough just to show up on Sunday morning and say, hey, everybody else is doing this thing, but I'm not, so, but it's fine because they're doing it. The church has to have these three things to be the church, the worship, the community, and mission. And if you're not participating in those things, you might not actually be part of the church. That doesn't all have to be in this room, obviously. You can grow outside in a life group, in a Bible study. You can, uh, you can give outside these walls, and please do. We've got to make sure that we have these things. Otherwise, we might not be a functioning member. We might just have our name on a card somewhere. And it's not always easy. It takes pushing past the uh, messiness. It takes pushing past our own brokenness. And you're going to have great excuses as to why you can't do these things. That'll never work, or this happened, or so-and-so did this. But we have to do it. Why? Because this is our mission. So where are you in this process? Maybe you're in the gather step. That's amazing. We are so glad you are. But God has more for you. God has a deeper relationship. Maybe you're in that grow step, and that's great. Grow deep in your spirituality. But we must also reach out to give out of the abundance of what God has given us, our time, our talents, our treasures. Give of ourselves. If you're not giving of your time, talents, and treasures, then you are missing out because it is way better to give than to receive. And next you find somebody to walk through these things, to invite them to gather and grow and give with you. Hey, come sit by me at church. Hey, come to life group and sit by me and let's go out to eat together. Hey, the, we're going to go and do this thing and serve the community in this way. Come do this with me. No matter where you are in this process, God has a next step for you. Whether you're new to church or you've been here forever. If you're alive And God still wants to use you. If you're not dead, God's not done. There's never a time when you retire as a Christian. My challenge to you is to ask God what your next step is. Am I gathering? Am I growing? Am I giving of myself? The funny thing is about these three G's is they always are uh, morphing and it's hard to decipher where one begins and the other one ends. Am I gathering? Am I growing? Am I giving? We have to do these things. Maybe the question for you today, is it time for me to be walking someone else through this process? Who am I discipling? Am I meeting new people that don't know Christ? If not, what can I do? Is there a club I can join? Is there a place that I can go and sit? What can I do to meet people that need to meet Jesus? Doing these things together is what some of you have been missing. And it's what has and what will change the world. This is our DNA. With every head bowed and eyes closed, as the worship team comes, the year 2023, we made it. It's a great time to look at 
how you're walking your Christian life. Church is not just about coming and sitting somewhere and listen to someone talk. In fact, the early church would probably be offended that we do it that way sometimes. They gave up everything to follow Jesus. They left their nets behind them. Some of them gave their lives. And they, they hid in secret. And praise God, we live in a country right now that that's not happening. But there are other Christians all over the world that do have to meet in secret. And we have the most amazing opportunity to talk about our faith and to walk it out and to give and to show this world that we love you, Jesus. So where are you in this process? The Bible says that people are going to know that we're a genuine church. We're going to know that we are disciples of Jesus by our love for one of another. So how are we acting that out? Are we gathering? Are we going? Are we uh, giving together? Let's take a minute. Just ask God what we should do with this information. Maybe God talked on your heart about something this morning you know it's time you finally get serious about your faith maybe you're a new parent and you're realizing this the first three four five years of these kids lives you got to be sure that you're raising them the way that god wants you to maybe your kids recently graduated and you realize that Man, there was a lot of busyness in your life that maybe wasn't the most important thing. And it's time to double down on your faith. Maybe your kids are grown and now you are a grandparent. There's nothing your grandchildren need more than a, grand, uh, a godly grandfather and grandmother. It's so easy to coast so easy to stagnate, so easy to go through the motions, so easy to get distracted from the most important thing, which is your walk with Jesus Christ. 